Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, we are gonna get crafty. So, if you guys have been keeping up with me on Instagram, I have really been into crocheting for the last couple months. And yes, I only thought it was appropriate to wear a sweater that I made myself. So as the Instagram and TikTok algorithms little hoe, I have been bombarded in the face by this beauty of a strawberry cardigan. And when I say that I am in love with this cardigan, I just... <clears throat> so this cardigan is originally from the brand Miracle Handmade, and they are owned by women, made by women, and sustainable. Which also means that their price range is a little bit out of my budget. And by a little bit, I mean $150 a cardigan. As they should be, because that's like kind of the bare minimum to pay someone a living wage. But I just don't have that kind of bank. So instead, I went to Michael's, bought myself some yarn. And we're going to see if I can make the closest thing I can to the strawberry cardigan. So I'm not sure how instructional or informative this video is going to be. It's just kind of me figuring things out as I go and explaining it to the best of my ability. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy and find this somewhat useful or entertaining. Let's get started. So I'm going to be using a medium weight or weight 4 yarn, a 4mm crochet hook, some scissors, and a darning needle. So I started off by making the cuff part of my sleeve, and to do that I made a slip knot and I chained 9. If you want your cuff to be longer, you can make more chains, or if you want it to be shorter, you can make less. After I have 9 chains, I'm just going to turn my work, skip the first loop from my hook and go into the second one with a single crochet. Then I'm just going to single crochet all the way down the chain until I reach the end. So because I chained 9 in the beginning, I now have a total of 8 single crochets. I'm just going to chain one, turn my work, and now we're going to work into the back loop only and do a single crochet in each stitch all the way until the end. Basically what working in the back loop only does is it makes the ribbing detail on the cuff, so as you keep making it longer you'll be able to see this really nice ribbing pattern. So again here, we're going to chain one, turn the work, and work into the back loops only all the way until the end. And I just continued this step until my ribbing was long enough to go around my wrist. So here I am measuring it around my wrist, and as you can see, we've made this really beautiful ribbing pattern. My nails look really janky in this clip, please ignore them. <laughs> so now I'm just going to work a single crochet into every single one of these top stitches just to make things easier for myself when I make the sleeve. So after I did all my single crochets, it is now time for me to fasten off the project. To fasten off, I chained one, cut the yarn, left a long tail for sewing, pulled it all the way through, and tugged it tight. Now I'm just going to take a darning needle and sew right down this side so that it goes around my wrist. To sew the cuff shut, all I did was I went through every stitch from front to back. After sewing my entire cuff shut, I'm just trying it on my wrist to see if it fits. To make the actual sleeve part of my sweater, I'm going to attach my yarn, chain up three, and then work two double crochets into the next stitch. 
sorry for the slightly out of focus footage here as I struggle to insert my hook into too tight of a stitch. <laughs> So finally there's one double crochet and I'm just going to do another one into the same exact stitch. In the next stitch we're only going to do one double crochet and in the stitch after that we're going to do two double crochets. Double crochets. So one in this one, two in the next one, one in the one after that, etc etc so on and so forth. So after I reach the end of my row, I'm just going to attach it with a slip stitch into the third chain that I made in the beginning. Slip stitch right there. And to start a new row, just chain up three. Remember that the chain three technically counts as a double crochet. So again, we're going to repeat what we did in the first row. Two double crochets in this stitch, one double crochet in the next, and repeat that until you reach the end of your row. So as you can see, I've reached the end of my second row here, and I'm just going to attach it with a slip stitch just like we did the first round. After that, we're going to chain up three. So for this row, instead of increasing like I did the past two rows, I'm just going to work one double crochet into every stitch until the end of the round. And I'm going to repeat this round, so no more increasing from here on out. I'm just going to repeat this until I get a sleeve that is long enough for my liking. So my sleeves ended up looking like this, and each of them ended up being 32 rows long. This honestly depends on your personal preference, so if you want shorter sleeves you can do less rows, and if you want longer sleeves you can do more. And now onto the front panel of our cardigan, which I made beforehand just to make sure I knew what I was doing before I told you guys anything. <laughs> So I just started off with making the ribbing panel for the bottom, and it's done the exact same way as the sleeve, except this time I did 30 rows or 8.5 inches long. After that, we're going to work a single crochet into every top stitch the exact same way as we did for the sleeve, except I will skip it and spare you that because I literally just told you how to do it! Ah yes, here we are. So after you did all of your single crochets, we're just going to chain 3. And instead of working into the next stitch, we're going to start by working in the exact same one. After that, just work one double crochet into every stitch until the end of the row. So I just did the exact same thing for 6 rows, and as you can see, it kind of tapers on the bottom and flares up on the top. That's because we started all our rows by working in the exact same stitch instead of the next one. I did this because I wanted it to kind of puff out in the front but cinch in at the waist. After 6 rounds of that, we're going to chain 3, turn our work, and now instead of working in the same stitch, we're going to work in the next one. So no more increasing at the beginning of our rows. From here on out, for the next four rows, we're just going to do one double crochet into every stitch until the end of the row. So I just repeated this until I had a total of 10 rows. One double crochet in every stitch, no increasing, no decreasing. Just keep doing this until the end of your 11th row. So here is the end of my 11th row, and I've left two stitches at the end because we're going to end this row with a double crochet decrease. And this actually makes the neck like the collar part of our cardigan, if that makes any sense. So by doing a decrease here, we're making the yarn kind of pull to the side to create this really nice diagonal. After that, we're going to start the next row with a decrease as well, so chain up 3 like you would normally, turn your work, and work a double crochet decrease into the next two stitches just like we did before. After your one decrease, you should be able to see that the cardigan is kind of pulling in, and this is what makes the v-neck part of the cardigan. 
I'm hoping this part of the explanation makes sense, but basically we're only going to be decreasing on one side of the panel. So when you reach the left side, just chain up three and do one single crochet in every stitch until the end of the row as usual, but when you reach the right, start and end the rows with a decrease. So I just continued doing those decreasing rows until I had 25 rows, and then the back rectangular panel is pretty self-explanatory. Basically, all I did was I made the ribbing panel the same way I did for the front, except I made it a little over twice as long as the front panel. So for me, that was approximately 18 inches long. After that, I just worked one double crochet into every stitch until the end of the row for 25 rows so that we had a plain rectangle that was the exact same height as the front. After sewing all of my pieces together and flipping it inside out, here is what the cardigan looks like on my body. As you can see, it's pretty short because I have a really short torso. So if you want it to be longer, you can make more rows instead of just 25. So all that's left to do in terms of the cardigan itself is make this little thin ribbing panel that goes around the front and back around the neck. I'm sure we're all familiar with how to make the ribbing by now, except this time, instead of chaining 9, we're going to chain 6 because we want it to be narrower. I wasn't sure how many rows of this I was supposed to do, so I just sewed it on as I went and then kept making it longer as needed. Here I am trying on the cardigan after I sewed the ribbing, and I'm really sorry that I forgot to film myself making the buttonholes, but basically all I did was chain 3 and skip 3 so that it would make like a little gap. <laughs> Alright, so I made a total of 10 strawberries for my cardigan, 3 for each sleeve and 2 for each front panel. I followed a tutorial that I linked in the description below and basically now all I'm doing is trying on the cardigan and pinning them where I want them to be. After that, I just sewed it on with yarn that matched the color of my sweater. Everyone, and with that we conclude my process on the strawberry cardigan as you can see it's a really cute crop length cardigan I'm actually really really proud of myself um, it doesn't have buttons yet because I have to order them but you'll see it on Instagram eventually um, if you want to recreate this feel free to tag me on Instagram at banana milk with two eyes it would make me so happy to see that someone else recreated my video and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments down below I hope that everything I explained as clearly as possible but if not, then I do read every single comment, so I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed, make sure you press the like button down below, the subscribe button, and the bell icon right beside it to get notified when I upload a new video. And with that, I guess that concludes the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!